For the past three years, I've been making or making videos on Hoi4 overhaul mods, and I've played every single mod on this list. So today I'll be going through all the mods, explaining them, and giving them a rating. To clarify though, I've at least once had a fun experience playing every single one of these mods, and all the ratings are just my opinion, and I'm very biased with some of them, and I'll make that clear. Before I start ranking the mods though, I will go through all the rankings and explain the criteria for each group. S tier mods will be mods that I believe are fun for everybody and objectively very well made. A tier might not be fun for everybody but still are good mods nonetheless and are some of the best. B are good mods with good concepts and implementation. C is a standard mod. Mods in the D category will still be good potentially but may have some problems that make it not very fun to play them in one way or another and you will just be unfinished mods that's impossible to rank because they're not finished or a demo or something though some mods that are demos won't be put in you because they're finished enough that you can play them and not have any problems that could be excused with them being unfinished the first mod we'll go through is old europe 1300 which is an eu4 or i think more accurately in EU3 mod for Hoi4. It has a 14th century start date and it's very chaotic. It has an economy system that's brutal. But once you figure out the mechanics, the mod is relatively easy, though it has an uprising problem that makes it not very fun to play. It's a very unique mod that's cool and it's a fun one-time experience, but it's not something that you'll be wanting to play more than once or twice. Next, we'll go with one of the larger and more well known Hearts of Iron 4 mods, Red Flood. This mod was originally a Kaiserreich clone, but has since become one of its own things, one of the more unique Hearts of Iron 4 mods out there. It kind of has some dark themes. It's more of a creepy, edgy mod, if you want to call it that. They've removed some of the meme stuff as of late though, so I believe they're trying to make the mod more serious, similar to what Kaiserreich did a couple years ago. Some of the countries like Germany are kind of railroaded, but overall there's a lot of diversity compared to something like Kaiserreich, probably most well known as the Accelerationist mod. And the Red Flood is a reference to a flood of blood, though a lot of people believe that the Red Flood is in reference to Germany being communist, but the mod isn't even focused on Germany. If anything, the main country in the mod is Accelerationist France. Next is the Metro mod for Hearts of Iron 4. It's a new one that came out, I believe, in January or February of 2022. I believe it still considers itself a demo, maybe, but even upon release, it was pretty well made. The combat was a little wacky because you're fighting in a subway system under Moscow, but it was a really cool experience nonetheless, and they've added content to a handful of countries, and it's a very unique experience that isn't bad or broken in any way or overcomplicated either. You can have fun playing this mod multiple times, I guess. So Unification Wars is a Warhammer 40k mod that it doesn't take place in the year 40,000 though. It takes place during the Unification Wars on Earth, which is how you can play it in Hearts of Iron 4 and it makes sense. It's a really well-made mod and it's personally probably one of my favorite mods if I just had to pick a few of the most cool overhaul mods I like. I'm not even a big Warhammer 40k fans, so I just really do like this mod on its own merits. It even has really cool technology and mechanics for the Imperium of Man, though there's not much content for a lot of other countries, so you can really only do one or two playthroughs to go through the focus trees that exist. And the Imperium of Man is the um, much better of the focus trees by far. Next, we will go with, in my opinion, a mod that had a lot of potential to be one of the best mods of all time, but wasn't really developed much over the past years, Führerreich. Just based on the mechanics of this mod alone, it's very interesting. Its concept is that it's the world that Germany from Kaiserreich imagined would exist if they lost World War One. It has very fun mechanics in the United Kingdom. Surprisingly, it's the most fun country in the mod to play. You're much more powerful as the UK than they historically were around that time. It's such an interesting 
interesting situation. Unfortunately, the mod has a lot of bugs. Its portraits are terrible. The United States doesn't do anything and is terrible to play as. But its major mechanics exist as a mini game where Germany keeps doing things and France and Italy decide when to intervene. And when they intervene determines how the war shapes out. And it's pretty fun. I think in an alternate world, this mod could have been at the top of S tier, but unfortunately it severely lacks in development. So I think you can still have a lot of fun playing this and you can do playthroughs as UK, especially Germany, France, and Italy and have a lot of fun. So I think even with its flaws, it can still sit at the top of C tier. But like I said, if it was given some more development and the portraits were fixed and some extra alternate paths were added so it wasn't as railroaded, it could definitely be a better mod. I even considered just contacting the dev team and saying that I would do a ton of stuff to fix their mod just because I like Fear Reich so much. Next is Old World Blues. I think this will be my first A tier mod just because it's the first mod on this list. It has so much replayability that you'll probably never play every single path and has an extremely unique combat system. For those of you who don't know, it's a Fallout New Vegas specifically mod for Hearts of Iron 4, taking place a few or maybe like three, four years before the events of Fallout New Vegas. It has an amazing UI, it has a bottle caps economy system, which I believe is the best economy system implemented in any Hoi 4 mod. Interesting mechanics with the followers of the apocalypse, a sort of pacifist organization. You can upgrade your trade hubs for bottle caps. The NCR and Caesar's Legion are very fun to play as, but almost every country on the map that has a focus tree has a very interesting, unique story and can be fun. Some of the larger criticisms I hear of it is the combat is very confusing if you don't know exactly how things work. Some countries you can do anything and win, like Caesar's Legion and the NCR if you're at least decent with the game, but overall it's kind of hard to grasp the exact combat mechanics. But overall, it's one of the best mods for Hearts of Iron 4. There's a lot of stuff you can do in there. It's not for everybody, but I recommend you give it a try. So next is End of a New Beginning. This originally was an extremely ambitious mod wanting to go from 1856 to 2050, though it's since been limited to, I think, 1950. For reference, a Hearts of Iron 4 game game is intended to go on about 10 years roughly in vanilla and in almost all of these mods and I probably haven't played a 10 year playthrough for a long time outside of Equestria at War. I've played it twice, once as Italy reunifying Italy and once as Germany unifying Germany. It's a very very slow mod which is its major setback since Hoi 4 is intended to go for about 10 years, each year taking about an hour in real life time to play through, maybe a little less than that. For example, if they actually made the mod go up to 2050, that could be a hundred hours of play time or 200 hours using my metric, though it probably wouldn't take quite that long. And you really aren't doing anything for most of the time. It kind of has a feel of that they're trying to make it Vicky 2 or Vicky 3 in Hearts of Iron 4. I think it's a fun mod to play a couple times reunifying Italy and reunifying Germany. Germany, but unfortunately whenever I think of this mod myself, I think of just sitting and doing nothing and letting my computer run while I let the years pass so I can get to a certain time period when something's actually happening for the country I'm playing as. So next is New Ways, which is one of my personal favorite Hearts of Iron 4 mods, so I'm a little biased. I guess it's somewhat debatable whether or not this counts as a total overhaul mod, but if we count Road to 56 as a total overhaul mod, this counts too. It adds a lot of small countries like the Vatican to the game and gives them all focus trees. It also adds a lot of funny paths. And I guess funny isn't the best word. They're not meme paths for the most part. They're all serious to some extent, though giving content to like Newfoundland is kind of crazy. <laughs> not many people are going to play that except YouTubers playing it to make a video because it's funny. Everything in this mod though is very 
you very well made. And you can probably play this mod 20, 30 times going through all the paths. My only criticism of this mod is some of the paths are very difficult to do correctly and you'll only ever figure them out with a guide, though that only applies to two or three paths in the entire mod. And for the most part, if you want to do a certain path, you can figure it out by yourself. And it's not an overpowered mod too. It doesn't make all the countries overpowered if you do a specific path, which I really like. And now here's the big one. TNO, The New Order, Last Days of Europe, one of two mods here that focus on what would happen if Germany won World War II. If you pulled every single person who had played most of these mods here, this mod would probably get the most votes for best Hoi 4 mod. But at the same time, this mod would also probably get the most votes for worst Hoi 4 mod. A lot of people have very strong feelings about it. Objectively, I think it probably has the best riding of any Hoi 4 mod, but one of the major complaints people have is that there's too many events and the events are too long. I think it probably has the most interesting stories of any Hoi 4 mod, but a lot of people complain that the stories are too cartoonish and the characters have become fake versions of themselves that aren't realistic human beings. In my opinion, I think the interesting fake versions of historical figures is what makes this mod what it is, like Soblin, RFK, Himmler, Taboritsky, Yazov. They've become such classic characters inside the TNO universe, even though they're way far off from what the people actually were, extremely exaggerated. But that's what makes the mod fun and interesting. I personally dislike the economy system called Toolbox Theory, though a lot of people praise it and think it's amazing. So it goes both ways there. And I think whether you think it's a terrible mod or it's an amazing mod, this probably is objectively the mod that has had the most work go into it, that has the most content and has the most advanced modding methods. It popularized the super event, which is an event that triggers a sound cue in the background, usually some sort of historical music song. And this mod single-handedly changed modding forever. I'm kind of burnt out of the mod personally because I've played it so much, so I wouldn't really give it that high of a rating. Though on the other hand, I think to some extent it deserves to be an S tier, but this mod is not for everybody, clearly, so I'll put it at the top of A tier. So immediately following TNO, I'll discuss the other What If Germany Won World War II mod, the alternate TNO mod. A while back, the Hoi4 community went through a phase where a lot of people only liked this mod because they disliked TNO. I think this mod, though, suffers from a lot of the same criticisms people have against TNO. Both TNO and Thousand Week Reich don't allow you to justify and declare wars at will. You have to specifically declare wars only through events and focuses. It has a German Civil War mechanic that's extremely reminiscent of TNO. And while I think it's unfair to say that the mod is railroaded. The world situation seems to be railroaded as most times when I play the mod it feels like the same thing happens with the allies invading and capitulating Germany. And a lot of people credit this mod with being more realistic than TNO, but from my experience playing them I think the scenarios outlined in both mods are equally as unrealistic, though the mods being unrealistic is not a negative in my opinion, so it doesn't matter either way. The simplest way to describe the difference difference between Thousand Week Reich and TNO is that TNO is a Cold War mod and if major powers capitulate each other or get close to capitulation that'll lead to nuclear war. Thousand Week Reich is more of a vanilla style mod, kind of, because you can capitulate Germany but at the same time you can't justify wars and you just have to go along with what your focus tree wants you to do. So after describing TNO as a sort of Cold War mod, I think we should rate the actual Cold War or Iron Curtain mod. And I think if TNO is a good example of how to make a Cold War mod, I think the Cold War mod itself is kind of dubious in some respects. Also, I apologize for this icon being the icon, I believe, for the Japanese localization of the mod. It doesn't matter either way. The mod starts off with the Chinese civil war between the nationalists led by Kai-shek and the communists led by Mao. And you would think that Chinese 
Chinese Civil War would be one of the major parts of the mod, though they've basically made it impossible to survive as Kai Shek. You could once do some exploits to win as him, but they've patched it, I believe, several times to make it impossible. You get minus negative 80% or something division organization as Kai Shek, which is ridiculous. And I think that ruins what could be one of the best parts of the mod by just making the victory for the communists free. But a lot of the mod is based on them winning and the nationalists fling to Taiwan like they did historically. So I understand why they did that. And the mod is good for what it tries to accomplish. So I can't fault it too much. Much. It's just not really a mod for me, and I don't feel like it has the same charm that TNO has. And here's the updated icon for it. So next we'll go even further into the future with Millennium Dawn, the modern day mod. Out of all the mods on this list, this is probably the mod that I can speak most critically of and that I dislike the most. There are some good things about the mod though that I will admit it's fun to play as your own country in this mod and just kind of LARP through through the modern day events and stuff of the 21st century. And this mod is fun if you don't want to do anything, but if you want to do something, this mod isn't fun. You can fight wars, but wars are kind of weird, and NATO mechanics are kind of weird. You can also puppet and annex and subjugate any country in the world just by using political power, even giant countries like the US and China and Russia very easily, and that's extremely broken. It has some cool satellite and missile system mechanics though which are fun to play around with and really cool and well implemented but they're kind of pointless at the same time. So there's a lot of cool stuff in this mod but it's really weird for a Hearts of Iron 4 mod and I don't think there's that many interesting paths. One of the major things people argue with me in the comments about is saying that forming the EU is the most fun part of the mod and avoiding wars makes the mod a lot more fun. Personally, I just don't like that in Hearts of Iron 4. I don't see what the purpose of building an army and stuff is then. But just to convey the opinions of the people who do like this mod, those are some of the main arguments for it. And I do think it is a well-made mod, despite me disliking it. Next is A Road to 56. It in some ways isn't like all the other mods because it is a vanilla enhancement mod. It adds focus trees to, I believe, every single country in vanilla. It adds tech to the game and it's a more fun way to play multiplayer. I think multiplayer is the main reason you'd want to play this mod, though you can play it in vanilla too if you just want an enhanced experience. Though there aren't many interesting paths it adds, besides a special fruit company takeover path. That's the only interesting path I can think of off the top of my head. But it's a really solid mod, Hearts of Iron 4, the game itself, this is just such an important mod to it. And now Kaiserreich. Again, if you polled everyone who's played most of these mods, TNO would probably have the most people say it's their favorite mod. Kaiserreich would be maybe a distant, but probably a close set. Second. It's probably the best made mod in terms of quality control and an interesting World War II scenario, but it is extremely railroaded. A variation of the exact same war will happen every time in this mod. Germany should be probably the main focus of the mod, but the Germany focus tree is kind of lacking and there isn't anything special you can do as Germany. In vanilla, you can restore the Kaiser, but in this, you only can keep the Kaiser. The second civil war in the United States is the best civil war in any Hearts of Iron 4 mod, hands down. Even better than the German civil war in TNO, in my opinion. Also, my favorite path of all time is in Kaiserreich. Kaiserreich Canada is my number one playthrough out of every single path in Hearts of Iron 4, so I am kind of biased, in a way, towards Kaiserreich, but I am very critical of Kaiserreich too, because it is very railroaded, but it is a very, very good experience, and you can play a lot of different 
different paths. People have their criticisms, though lots of criticisms I hear personally is that they just want the devs to make more of the content that they're making. Now we move on to an interesting mod, and for people not familiar with this mod, you're going to be very confused with where I rate it. I think in terms of regular criticisms that mods receive, this mod passes all checks. It's balanced, which I haven't even talked about balance really. Probably only half of the mods on this list, I would say, are balanced. And this one is better balanced than all of them. And most importantly, this mod runs faster than every single other mod of its scope, which is a big deal because being able to run a mod fast without incredible lag makes things so much better. I gave Kaiserreich the top of A tier anyway, but I used to hate Kaiserreich simply because of late game lag, though in recent playthroughs I haven't experienced it that much, so it gets a pass for now. Upon adding Zebrica, Equestria at War slowed down a lot, but again, it's still faster than any other mod of its size. All the secret paths and non-secret cool paths in this mod are just amazing. The only downside, and I personally don't care, <laughs> but it's obviously, if you didn't pick it up from its name, uh, My Little Pony mod, which turns a lot of people away from it. But if you can get over that, or just play with a mod that replaces the pony leaders with people, I do think that this is the best modded experience that you can have in Hearts of Iron 4. So it might not be fair to put it in S tier just because some people cannot play it because of the ponies. That aside, I think it is the best made mod hands down. And personally, my favorite mod, and surprisingly, I'm not a brony. I guess I guess it's probably hard to believe, but I do just really like the mod for its merits alone. And I originally thought it was a joke. And the first time I played it, I realized what I'm saying right now, that it was the best mod at the time. So I probably should have ranked this one right after Kaiserreich, but we'll rank it now. Kaiser Redux. A lot of people prefer this over Kaiserreich just because it has more interesting meme paths, you can say. I don't know exactly when it was, but two or three years ago or something, Kaiserreich removed some of its more meme paths, though they were hardly meme paths to begin with. Like, you could avoid the second Civil Wars America, but now that's impossible. Though in Kaiser Redux, you can still avoid it, I believe. Some of the major criticisms against it, though, are some of the paths are just too stupid or crazy, or that it runs really slowly. And I'm not a huge fan of it, but a lot of people really like this mod, and there's a lot of content content in this mod, so I won't rank it too lowly despite my own opinions. So the last, I would say, major Hearts of Iron 4 mod on this list is the Great War Redux. A Redux? I, I'm, I'm just gonna say Redux because that's how I've been pronouncing it, but I'm not sure. The original Great War mod <laughs> would have been at the bottom of D tier because it's very outdated and it was kind of broken. <laughs> Felt like it never worked and the war was very boring. But this mod surprisingly does make World War 1 pretty fun. Even though like Kaiserreich, it is very railroaded, the same thing more or less is usually always going to happen, but there's some funny stuff in it. <laughs> like you can get Comrade, Secretary General, Tsar Nicholas, which is stupid but amazing. And if you want to play a World War One mod, you don't have many options, but this is probably your best choice. So next, Pax Britannica. <laughs> this mod alone made me decide not to make a mod I was making because I thought it would be too simple similar to this mod. Though this mod isn't exactly what you would think it is. It's called Pax Britannica. Um, it's not exactly that, per se. The United States never got its independence from Britain, but Britain isn't like some very, very powerful nation. It's also, as you maybe can tell from the icon, a steampunk mod. Though the steampunk aspect doesn't really play into things besides the research, and it really does have a lot of potential. I don't know exactly where I would rate it though, so I'm just gonna put it in unfinished because right now only three countries have focus trees. I don't think they've added any more. So only Germany, which I believe was formed by Austria, France, and the UK have focus trees. Once more things get focus trees, I think it'll be a lot better. So I'll just put it in unfinished for now. I'm also going to put End of a New Beginning into unfinished too because if they can actually make content up to 1950, then it might be an amazing mod even if it runs terribly and it's kind of boring. This is the Brothers War mod. It could also be put into Unfinished reasonably, but this one I 
don't want to put in Unfinished because I think all the countries that need Focus Trees to have a Brothers War have Focus Trees, and the Prussia Tree is pretty fun in my opinion. And in this mod, Austria is probably the main important player, and I haven't actually played Austria myself, but from friends who have played Austria, they've told me that Austria is lacking compared to countries like Prussia. And to clarify too, this isn't a mod about the Brothers War, this is a mod about if Austria won the Brothers War, I believe, so it still takes place at the normal time of Hearts of Iron 4 in 1936, maybe the date is a little different, but it's a World War II scenario where Austria and the Holy Roman Empire kind of exist in a way. And again, putting it above Kaiser Redux is questionable, but this is just my own personal bias, okay? You can't be mad at me. Well, feel free to be mad at me, I really do want to hear what you guys think about things. And these last five mods, Ashes of Libertad, World War Zero, the San Andreas mod, the Perfect World mod, Rise of Nations. Out of all of these, Rise of Nations is the most well developed. They're all unfinished though to some extent. Ashes of Libertad is a what if the Cold War went hot to mod focused on Latin America. World War Zero is a mod taking place in the year 2100. The San Andreas mod is San Andreas in Hearts of Iron 4. Perfect World is just a completely original scenario. And Rise of Nations is a mod that tries to give Hearts of Iron 4 a ton of start dates similar to the extended timeline mod in EU4. And here's my final rating. I moved things around a little, but most importantly, I just wanted to go through every mod and talk about each one a little, just to give everybody an idea of most of the major and some random minor overhaul mods within Hearts of Iron 4. I'd love to know though what your opinions on these mods are and if there are any big mods that I completely forgot about. But yeah, that's about it. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>